Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, brother. How you doing? Good evening. How you feeling, man? Doing all right. We're doing all right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So Pretty first, good. yeah, go ahead, brother. I was going to just say, you know, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I was going to ask you the same thing. Yeah, man. It was a different one this year. You know, I'm it sure was it was different for you. Yeah, it was very different. Um, usually, I have people over. Like, there's mm -hmm. always somebody coming over, and it, that just didn't happen. Um, I know even for Christmas last year, you guys was with us. Mm -hmm. Last Christmas mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. It looks like COVID is saying no, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, yeah. So I think everybody, even across the nation, is erring on the side of caution now you know, with uh, the gatherings and things like that. So yeah, it was different for us. We were hopeful that, you know, we had a gathering at VR. Um, we, were, we were expecting, you know, people to, you know, travel and all that, but mm, we err on the side of caution and it's, it's better to be safe and secured. And um, thank God for Zoom and all these virtual abilities to be able to connect anyway. So we made the best of it. We ended up having a good time. You know, we, we made the best of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what's crazy about the the whole COVID thing? I think people are erring on the side of caution because, um, you know, for most people, COVID is going to be not a not a serious event. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't know if you're one of those people, right? Who become a serious event. That's so, true. That's true. That's you know, true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to say, well, you know, I'm overweight, so I can't get COVID or I have this uh, condition, so I can't get it. But even sometimes healthy people, they get it and it just does yeah. things to them. Yeah. So. That's so true. That's so true. So we're just praying for everybody in this time. You know, it's a very tense time, very anxious time. I know a lot of people, um, you know, it may be difficult to find a lot of things to be thankful for. But listen, it's November. It's November. And we made it this far. Actually, it's not November anymore. Excuse me. It's, it's December. December. See how quick the year went? Yeah. It's December now. And it was a long oh, year. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> it was. It was definitely going in slow motion. Yeah. Every day, every month seemed like it had 40 days in it. <laughs> That's right. That's Crazy. right. We made it, man. Thank God we made it through. Uh, we made it through and we uh, we are so happy to be able to do this and um, come on here and just kind of help provide resources to those who um, who need it and just information to make it easier accessible for people to get. So yeah. always excited to get on here and and spread the wealth and the knowledge. Yeah. 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 So, so you want me, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, let's pray ourselves in and let's get started. I'm excited to talk about what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, we, we did a part one the week before Thanksgiving, and I thought that was really interesting. If you haven't seen it, I would go back and look at it. Uh, we're really trying to address a very, very um, important topic and probably one that is kind of overlooked or kind of taboo. So we, we're getting personal a little bit talking about our community and, um, you know, talking about the, how we can better bridge the wealth gap in our community and different strategies that, um, that, that, that can be implemented. And also uh, discussing some myths that we as a community have, you know, used as a barometer for our decisions. So it's gonna be uh, interesting, right? So let me, I'm gonna pray and we'll, we'll jump right in. Okay, cool. Lord, we thank you for this time of sharing, for this time of fellowship. We thank you for a safe holiday. Thank you for everybody getting back from their several destinations safe and sound. Thank you for uh, traveling mercies over the dangerous highways and byways. Uh, we ask you for your covering. Um, we ask for the covering for everyone we know and who we love uh, from this terrible pandemic. We thank you for this time to share. We hope that something that is said right now and right here on this platform will be used to advance and further their financial interests and to just generally build generational wealth. We thank you for this and Jesus name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. All right, so there is an article that yes. is germane 
to what we have been discussing. Absolutely. Right? And I just want to, I just want to kind of, I know we have other people that, that look um, at us, but I, I think we kind of want to talk to our community really quick because when we talk, um, other communities don't have some of the same perceptions when it comes to insurance as our community has. So we got this article um, and the name of the article is the five myths that keep black Americans from buying life insurance. Hey, brother yeah. Dane. What's up? What's up, fellas? Dane, how you doing, how you doing brother? How y'all doing? Good to All see right. you. Somebody got yeah. some new spectacles over there. Okay. <laughs> Better to you see you with. I see that. Yeah, I see. They, they nice and good. Uh, got that red tint on them, brother. Looks good on you. Thank you, you man. You had a good Thanksgiving, man? Man, listen, I had a really good one this year. I got to go home for the first time for Thanksgiving. Usually, you know, they used to, you know, the family comes here or uh -huh. we just here, you know, with my wife's side of the family, but we got to go back to the crib. So it was a fantastic. Um, good. We had a great time. Man. We had a really good time. Excellent. Yeah. So we was in here talking about this article, um, and I, I, I kind of want to delve into uh, okay. all this because we hear these things on a daily basis. All the time. All about the time. five myths? The five the myths, yeah. Okay. Like black Americans from buying life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to read uh, just one statistic here. Yeah. I have from life. <laughs> Nearly 80% of Black Americans said having life insurance is a goal for them. Uh, that's compared to 63% of all adults. So if, if, if that's true, then what is keeping Black Americans from getting life insurance, <laughs> right? So 80% of us are saying, you know, I, I believe there's 20, there's a little over 20 million um, Black Americans in America. So let's just say there's 20 million Black Americans. That means roughly 20% is, uh, that means 16 million of us. 16 million of us want insurance, but for whatever reason, we are not getting it. So why? That's, that's the question we're trying to address. So mm -hmm. this first thing is myth number one. So let's talk about it. Most Black people think that insurance is for final expenses only. Yeah. Now, that is true. Okay. True. Um, and I think, you know, I was, I was reading, I was trying to find it, guys. Uh, there was an article that I did read a uh, while ago, and it said something about, maybe one of you guys might find it, or w one of you guys uh, that are watching might be able to find it, but it, it referenced um, the, it back in the Civil War time when, you know, Black, black families were, uh, when insurance kind of, a lot of these insurance companies kind of started back then, hundreds of years, a couple hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and um, they, they, there was, life insurance has always been a part of, of financial instruments to help families. They were designed to be able to help to create wealth and protect the uh, livelihoods of families who lost loved ones. And, um, but there was a disparity in how they were offered. So uh, final expense, which is usually smaller policies, smaller whole life policies, which are important, okay? But um, there, there's more to insurance than just them. But in the black community, uh, back then, they were offered these smaller policies as um, as a primary means of protecting their families, and they weren't offered in the same uh, proportion, the larger amounts as other races were offered at that time. So, as a family working, uh, typical black family, African American family working, not really making that much, to have the opportunity to get a life insurance policy for ten thousand, five thousand, or whatever it was back then, that would that would equate to taking care of all of the final expenses, you, that, would, that would be like, that's miraculous. However, yeah. you know, on the other side of it, there's this whole aspect and this whole other uh, opportunity 
that the other races are taking advantage of that they weren't offered. So I believe it kind of started with like this stigmatizing of, well, you just need it for uh, final expenses because that's your most, imp that, that's what it's for. And that's all insurance is for. There's right. no other opportunities for it. And that is very true. We see that even to this day in people's just perception of what, like, I'm, what, how much insurance they need and what it can actually do for their life and their family. Well, and that's true what you said, because there is a lost opportunity. Now, we're not going to we're not going to say um, final expense insurance is bad. All any insurance you got is right. good. Right. Great. However, there is a lost opportunity because um, final expense, you don't get too much into indexing, income protection, wealth accumulation, uh, retirement planning. All that stuff is has, you know. Final expense is real simple, real mm -hmm. straightforward. Final strategy. expense. Yeah. It's just for final expense. Nothing wrong with that, but that, that's all it's for. And oftentimes, a lot of people don't realize that the final expense market is tailored to um, people who waited a long time to get insurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of races, they take advantage of getting their children insurance when it's cheap like really really cheap whereas when black people finally do get some final expense it's because they aged themselves out of other markets right so they have final expense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's so true and then also I, I think about it like like this and this is one thing i learned early when i you know first started this industry uh, over a decade ago um it, it's it's really uh interesting how many times and how insurance is designed to grow with your life. So, and this is the part that I think is really important. Um, not only do we get insurance as babies, but it's supposed to grow with our life and adjust to the changes of our life. So there are different opportunities. And remember we did this before guys, that's where we presented it. Uh, opportunities are when you buy a home, that's the perfect time to, to, to look at your insurance to make sure that that mortgage is taken care of. You get married, that's the perfect time to look at your insurance plan. You start a new job, you, you know. You graduate from school. Uh, there's different different things happen. Sometimes things happen in life that remind you that you need to look at your insurance yeah, babies uh, plan. Are, just had new babies, babies are born. Mm. Babies are born. Yeah. yeah. So all these things happen. You know, you get ready to retire. You know, and and you need you need to look at what your job has offered you and what your job is not going to let you keep. There's different opportunities, and unfortunately, those opportunities uh, are often missed throughout our life and it takes a tragic event or it takes something serious to happen to make right. sure to make us have these conversations, you know? And that, that's really what, what it is. And it's, it's an ongoing issue uh, that we as a community are constantly wrestling with. All right, so I, I wanna get Jane to jump in here. Um, sure. I know this one is going is kind of right up your alley, this second myth, right? So here we have a, um, a dentist, a 72 year old dentist who mm -hmm. in his way of thinking, because he's old school, he come from a different generation. Right. His, his philosophy is kind of um, to his kids and to his grandkids, you know, you got to work. You got to, you right. got to yourself up. I'm not leaving you anything. Right. So the among black Americans is no handouts. There, there's a concern among Black Americans where we don't want to just leave you our hard-earned money that you didn't work for because you're going to waste it. Mm -hmm. So what you got to say about that, bro? Uh, I believe there's a lot of truth to that. Unfortunately, uh, it should never be that way. It should always be uh, with a legacy in mind, if you will. And uh, as I was just, you know, shifting through some notes here. So actually, in uh, the U.S., Black folks make up about 40 million. So we're about 13% of the population. Okay. So okay. given that, there's been a historical uh, uh, repetition of us not feeling like we need to, uh, you know, leave a legacy behind or, as you said, to leave it, you know, to, you know, to leave something for the kids. And I don't believe that that's a myth. I believe that that's a fact. I believe that we pass on that mindset as, you know, when you turn 18, you got to get out. I know we always 
a part of that, right? When you when yeah. you turn in, you got to go. You got to go to college. You got to figure something yeah. out. Now we see these millennials staying at home to 25, 27, 30. You understand what I'm saying? And now what that affords them to do is not to ruin their credit because they went to college, they came back home, stayed at home, started working a job and was able to establish credit. So I think that whole idea of, you know, you got to get out when you're 18, don't look for me to hand you nothing. It's just foolishness because everybody need help. I don't care but, who you is. Everybody me, need help. But let me ask you this. Do you think there's wisdom in that no handout mentality? Because we have some yeah. of the we have some of the richest men in the world, like Bill Gates, uh, uh, Warren Buffett. They have already committed. Now these are men of extraordinary, once in several generational wealth. Mm -hmm. They already yeah. committed. I'm not leaving my kids nothing. They're not getting anything. So on our level as black Americans, when you see, when you hear about older people with that same mentality, is there wisdom in it? Does it make sense? Uh, you know, listen, I don't think as a black community, we can afford to adopt that mentality. Now I'm careful oh, yeah, with say, that and I say, say that respectfully that because this is the thing, right? Black people yeah. by nature have to work so hard to just be status quo. You have to be twice right. as smart, twice as gifted, twice as, uh, you know, and even in our business, unfortunately, there's some things that we have to do that we can't really relax. We have to look a certain way. We have to dress a certain way. We have to speak a certain way um, in order for, you know, in order for that impression. Now, everybody's not like that. You know, we have awesome clients who could care less because they respect us and there are people who respect us. But by and large, as a culture, there is a perception of black people, a perception of black people in business where there is a stigma there of being less than or being less qualified, even with the same credentials or sometimes even more. And it's even yeah. worse when you go black women, like the, it's, it's even worse. So, yeah. so the, the thing is when we come to like family um, and leaving legacies, I think it's imperative for us as parents and, 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 and uh, leaving children behind to give them the most, the best chance of succeeding in life that we can. And if that sure. means leaving them something to give them a head start, leaving them a deposit on a house, leave it, and then with leaving them that, also creating, uh, teaching them discipline, teaching them those things that we weren't necessarily taught, that's gonna help to break the stigma in our community. Cause it's not just a family thing, this is a community thing. This is a generational yeah. thing. Yeah. Right, right. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, let me ask I agree you this. With that. What you got next, brother? What you got? Let me ask you this. There's another one. We got three more. I'm gonna try to get through them. I, I would love to kind of just stick with. We could. We could actually do each one of these. In a we, could. we could. We could. Thank me. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But I, I kind of want to get through them. Number three. I have life insurance. Oh. Now, I, hold on. Now, are you saying? And then you can get right back. Are you saying when you sitting with somebody? especially our type and they said oh no I already got that already meaning that they already purchased it or they thought about getting it when you mentioned it in their mind they thought they got it but they really didn't get it well how about well, that well here's 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 my experience right yeah. there's there's two there's two types of people usually right um and it, this goes back to something john said usually mm. Most people who say I already have insurance are talking about what they have through their employer. And, okay. and because it's so cheap, because it's so cheap to have that insurance, they don't spend any time investigating what that insurance really is. They mm -hmm. have no clue what it means to have it. So mm -hmm. once, once they move to another part of life, they're gonna be very shocked to know that they are not covered or they're undercovered, right? Mm -hmm. This type of person is somebody who got insurance a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. And at this point, their, their life needs have changed so much, it would be worth it to look at their policy and just kind of review everything again. But yeah. because I have insurance, they don't need any help, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this is what typically happens, right? Um, you get a person that, that they got a $500,000 policy, um, 
for about $10. Let's just say $10, $10 a month. They got a $500,000 policy. Mm-hmm. Problem is, they got this policy when they was 18, 19. Now, mm-hmm. they, they, they in their 30s, and that policy is about to end. Yeah. The policy is about to end. They don't realize, so they've been paying $10 for the last 10 years or last 20 years, whatever it is. They've been paying $10 all this time and it has seeped into their mind, this is what insurance costs. It's not supposed to be no more. It's not yeah. supposed to be less. It kind of, it kind of, they, they develop this attitude. It's, it's only this amount of money. Yeah. But realize is, you 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 got one or two decades older. Insurance is much different now sure. for you than it was then. Yep. So as soon as you you know come at them with what their needs are right now, oh I don't I have insurance. I don't I don't want to hear that. Right. I don't want to hear that. they just yeah. dismiss, dismiss you. Yeah, that is so true. And then trying to convince them otherwise is is hard because now five hundred thousand dollars sounds different twenty years yeah. later, yeah. Um, and that's probably when you need it the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you see what I'm saying? And I think one yeah. of the things that I've run into um, also, um, and I'm sure you guys have as well, is trying to figure out help people calculate how much they actually need, right? Mm-hmm. Always. Because when you say you have it, I mean you can have you got. five. You can have five thousand dollars, but that yeah. that. That's not what you could have. And, and I think a lot of times we think about it from our present budget and not what the budget will mean to the next generation. You know what I mean? That's true. So, so yeah. Because it, it really is it's pennies on the dollar, right? Mm-hmm. So I, what, what we're saying is if you give me $100, I'm going to give you 100000 But I said, yeah. I, if you give me $100, I'm going to give you $100,000. That's right. Like, it, 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 if, if you knew when your death date was going to be, or when you knew you were going to be able to cash in, who would not do that? Right. Like, and, and was, it, yeah, go ahead. And, and it's kind of like you said, um, people don't really realize how much insurance they need because let's say you got that $500,000 policy, but a year before you died, you just bought a $500,000 house and you got kids. So that almost that entire policy is going to either do one or two things. It's either going to pay off that house to make sure the kids got somewhere to live or the kids are going to waste that money. And then the house is going to eventually be at risk of being lost anyway. That's why you need so much more. And people yeah. don't realize. And that's where the will comes in and all the other stuff that, you know, keeping that stuff in order, beneficiaries correct, having the right people in charge. But it's just expanding our mindset. And I think that's really what 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 needs to happen. And I mean, this is a, this is an ongoing challenge, though. This is an ongoing challenge. challenge. And yeah. look, I got something for it. Watch this. So lately, I don't know if y'all have been in tune with the news or not, but you see a consistent pattern of people taking advantage of these government unemployment loans and all of that, right? And I believe, I I don't know if it's our community that participates in it at the highest level. So we get the news media. I don't really know. I'm sure everybody is yeah, different. I'm sure it's spread out. I'm sure To some capacity. Out. But the, the people that I see the most are our community, young cats. And unfortunately, what the... What the idea is, is that let me get all I can get right now and I'm going to just spin it up and I'm not going to think about tomorrow. And I believe that this is the generational uh, mindset that's been passed down is that I'm going to get all I can get right now and I'm going I'm to spin it up and it's up to you to decide how you're going to get yours because I'm going to get mine now. And I think if we can get them to realize that all these guys that's buying or excuse yeah buying all of these expensive cars with this government stolen money and living these lavish lifestyles if they was really concerned about what they was going to leave behind out you know it would be it should be uh breaking news if a person was doing that and buying up a lot of uh life insurance policies you understand what i'm saying or investing exactly. it or land or land yeah or something buying some property so 
I mean, I think, again, just swinging it back to what John and also what you said, brother, is that it's, just, it, it's a mindset and it's really a myth. And unfortunately, this generation, like how we are operating right now, let's just be clear. Only our grandparents' parents was even had the opportunity to, to do what we're doing, you know, or potentially do what we're doing, meaning going to school, earning some type of income, and being able to think past the now. And unfortunately, the mindset hasn't caught up with what we really have access to, although we know we're really not participating in this whole, uh, you know, wealth gap. You know, we're not really participating to the fullest capacity because of the mindset, I believe. You know, there's a lot of other things that hold us back, clearly, and we understand what those underlying things are. But for the most part, what we do get, once we get it, we just, you know, show and prove that we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing all along. Let me just spin it up and not really think about how to, uh, you know, leave something behind. So I think if we could get this younger culture, man, to, you know, see the value and, you know, not just starting a business, but how do you leave that business? Because a lot of brothers is doing it. They, you know, entrepreneurs left and right. You know, you see websites popping up, clothing lines popping up, uh, you know, all of these different services popping up, but how are they protecting that business? Because once that individual who, who is the, you know, the brains and the talent, once that runs out, the business is going to fold. Well, well, let, let, let's go to the fourth one, because you just said something very key. Okay. The fourth okay. myth is people say insurance is only for my beneficiary. There is, and this is the one that bothers me probably the most, because okay. people, we hear it all the time where people kind of say, why do I care what happens after I die? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. bury cremate me. I don't care. And people don't realize that when they die, there's so much, so many issues that are left outstanding. There, yeah. There's just a lot of things left outstanding. Like for instance, what, what happens to your business? What happens to your home? What happens to your kids? If you don't have no kids, what happens to these other family members? The tax, um, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, why, why not take advantage to put somebody through school or pay down some debt. There's so many things that insurance can be used for and people just have it in their mind. I don't care what happens once I die. Well, you're, you're not gonna care about anything. So that's kind of stupid, but <laughs> you just don't care. And, and what, what do we say to that line of thinking? I mean, that's a, that's a tough one. And, and I, I think I, I, I feel a certain way about that too. And I, I, think, it, I think it's deeper than um, what it is because then it kind of speaks to family relationships it kind of speaks to you know say you have a, a family that's estranged from each other you have children who never looked after them and now all of a sudden i'm not gonna make them rich because they didn't care about me in the first place or i all my life i put them through school i paid for college i paid for them to get this the opposite I paid for them right. that i did all that while they were living so i'm not gonna leave them nothing when they're dead i gave them everything i had then i barely was able to live when I was living. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's, and that, though, I've seen both sides of the spectrum. You know, I've, I've, I've experienced something even personally where, you know, uh, I, I was invested in heavily as best as they could um, while they were alive, but it was a lack of full understanding. It was mm. a lack of um, access to what they had access to. And I, I think that that's, that's really saying something too in that you know, a lot of times when people go to their jobs or whatever, they have human resources, they have these things, that's access. So you have access to the information if you ask. But because you're just so happy to have that job and you just so you just want to commit to being the best employee, yeah. you're living in the present so much to the point that you get to the age where you're getting ready to retire. And now yeah. you have never asked those questions that could have positioned you better when you got when you had those years. So now you have to rely on what you've got left and what you can get. And then that sets you up to not be able to do anything other than what you've already done, you know? Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's, it's a cycle that, that, that happens. And I believe like you're saying, Dane, it's really, you know, the generations like now, you know, our generation, 
uh, maybe the generation ahead of us now that mm -hmm. that will and definitely the generation below us and coming after us being able to set the stage and say, listen, these are strategies that, you know, we wish our parents knew about and knew enough about to kind of help us along. Now, you know, there are some parents that are in our generation that that know, you know, but by and large in our community, it's not it, we can't say that it's not access anymore. We can't say that we can't get the information. It's just about knowing what to ask, you know, and being curious about your future and less more curious about your future than your present comfort. And, right. and, and, and that's, that's the last uh, myth um, that we're going to touch sure. on. Dane, take this one away. Um, sure. People think insurance is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for instance, in this example, uh, somebody was looking for a $5 million policy, and they just mm -hmm. thought it would be like $1,000 uh, a month. But you don't know what insurance is going to cost. And this goes back to something John said, where it's actually mm -hmm. penny a dollar. You don't know what it's going to cost until you have a conversation, right? Dang. Absolutely, brother. I mean, I think in the first one that you touched on, you talked about uh, your health or your age, attain age, right? So mm -hmm. I think if people are informed early on that the cost of insurance is not as expensive if, if you plan properly, right? So I think the bigger concern is, is when can we have a conversation that's gonna be, that's gonna have clarity, that's gonna actually resonate with people to say, you know what? This is something that I should consider. And I always say this, if people consider uh, getting life insurance the same way that they consider getting that cell phone, and it used to be cable, but now a lot of folks don't even have cable. So now it's the cell phone, but people will go to extreme measures to make sure that their phone is paid for, that their service is on and all of that, but they won't even explore what it is to have a life insurance policy that's going to change their life. Because at the end of the day, there are a few people that we have met that don't care about what they leave for anybody. And then we also have those that want to, you know, try to do as much as they can. And then you have those that are just like, look, just bury me, put me in the ground. But to me, all of that is just lack of information because if they actually sat with a financial advisor who could explain to them the, um, you know, the importance of what you get today is extremely important to how it's going to reflect in the future. I mean, it's a no brainer, you know? So well, to answer your question, it is very inexpensive to purchase life insurance if you get it at the attained age and health, you know? I, I, I think I, I have an idea. I, I, I'm, I, I've been thinking about this a long time, but I think this is something we should start doing, um, especially here at Martin and Murray and just encouraging, like maybe just have a little informal campaign. Um, people are always doing gender reveals, doing baby showers, um, and there's a, and there's just people buying two hundred dollar gifts, buying this, buying that, buying this, yep. and when the baby come home, they have plenty of pampers, they have plenty of formula, they have plenty of toys, they have plenty of gadgets, but too many times they don't have a life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. I think what might make sense if, as a people, as you know, as a people. When these babies are born at a baby shower, listen, I'm going to pay for the first year of insurance for this little infant that's going to come out. It's going uh -huh. to be what? It's going to be $75, $100? Yeah. A year, though. A year, uh, though. That's not, that, I mean, it's not, for babies, it's not expensive at all. That's not, a, yeah. no. That, that'll pay for a whole year of insurance. And yeah. then the next, you pull out your $100 bill, you pay the next year. And then by the time that baby reaches the age of 20, you've only spent $2,000 on what's possibly a $50,000 policy. Who, you, you know what I'm and saying? Kyle, that's interesting too. And a lot of times with these carriers, once they get to that age, they can triple the coverage without any extra stuff. So if nope. you got $50,000, you triple that. And now yep. the kid has a, has a start that they wouldn't have had started otherwise. And Just because you went to a baby shower and decided to do that. Wow. 
and 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 yep. the thing is when that child turns 18 instead of them come having to come to mom or dad to borrow money listen you got this insurance policy you can borrow from yourself right and you that's know? another thing that they you know a lot, most of us don't know about that because we didn't know about it until we got into the business i don't think exactly I, yeah exactly. i didn't know about it so you have to be a fully licensed insurance broker to understand how stuff breaks down but i think if we can figure out a way to uh, present this in front of people, kind of like, what's the, the easiest way to put it? In its simplest form where they can see it, but at the same time, they don't feel like it's work or it's a major decision. Because I think when people start feeling like they got to make a really big decision right, in right, life, right. the word right. life, the word insurance feels like, oh man, I feel like I'm buying a house. I don't want to get involved, right? So they kind of shy yeah. away from it. If we can figure out a way where they can have an intuitive experience with, you know, the same way that you go buy a new phone, the same way you go buy, uh, you know, a certain carrier or, you know, not but, even a new car, because that's just as, you know, uh, you know. But I, you know, what? I think as a black community, we got to get them early. I think the best place is those baby showers, because you tell somebody, listen, it's going to cost you a hundred dollars for the whole entire year to get insurance. Like, how could you say no? How could you be like, ah, oh, that's too much? But you know what, too, Kyle? And, and you're right about that. But I think going even deeper, anything that you ever bought, Kyle, anything that you ever bought, Dane, mm -hmm. were you sold by the price tag or were you sold by the value that that object was, was going to bring to your life? Sometimes both. By and large, though. Most by times when you were going to make a purchase... Was it about money or was it about this? I mean, the things that you truly um, kept and the things that you saw um, that was worth it and you look back value. at it, was it price or was it value? It was value. And I think that is what needs to be understood by our community. The value yep. of the fact that I'm, if I put this hundred dollars somewhere and I'm okay if it's not, I'm not a necessarily a direct beneficiary of this, right? But you might still be, but at the end of the day, this is going to change tra the trajectory of my family and my community because there's but, value there to it. But I, I, we, we got to close, but may, maybe this is a question for another time. Yeah. COVID, COVID has really uh, revealed who we are as you know Black Friday just happened and there was no crazy fights there was no there was long lines in a few places but for the most part people just kind of stayed away mm -hmm. but right. Black Friday is prices come down a little bit and what happens is people do a lot of impulse buying and I'm wondering why in our community we don't have no mentality for impulse buying when it comes to financial services insurance investment like what the when value we get, when we get an extra hundred dollars why is it like i gotta get this tv but it's not i gotta get this insurance you want me to take it w what's that about you want me to take it brother it's the value <laughs> aspect yeah it's the value aspect just like john said because going back to what i said earlier it's about getting something now and living it up now. When they look at life insurance, because they don't know the other components of, that's attached to the living benefit side, they only focus on what they're gonna get. So you mean I gotta die in order to get that half a million? I, I don't need it because they don't see the value for them. But if we can explain to them the value in a living benefit, and then if they have uh, the heart to understand that you know the greatest thing that you can be is is a service to anybody, especially your family, then we're on the right track. So I think going back to what you said, John, it's all about the value. Once we can put value on it, because you know, the insurances, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, we've been in the business long enough to know that when people get caught up in a jam, the insurance is the first thing to go. That's the very yeah. first thing that they said, you know what, I can go without that and then I can get it again because the value is not as significant as whatever other bill or investment that they want to do at that time. It just don't balance out. So yeah, that's, you know, yeah. that's, that's in my own opinion. So.
No, you're right. You're right. right. And I, right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. right. And I think this is just going to be some work that we're going to have to just continue to do. Um, but this is the start, you know, us coming on here and making ourselves available for uh, people, not just our community, but every community. Um, but, but just having this heart to heart with those uh, who are part of our community that we take advantage of the opportunities to just ask questions, to understand, and to make ourselves better, not just individually, not just for now, but for the yeah. future, for the future of our family. I agree. All right. Well, I, I appreciate this conversation. I really feel like we could have went, we really, if we had the time, we really could have went. <laughs> yeah, I we would. Get to another level. Absolutely. For sure. And uh, yeah. are we going to have any guests on before the year ends? So we usually, you know, we're pretty consistent with the guests being on. Do we plan on doing uh, guests again, or are we just going to yeah, close? Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think we are. We will definitely talk about that, because um, we definitely want to. It would be nice to try to close a year out with, you know, one or two people. I've had a couple people line up, but trying to coordinate it, um, you know, okay. with, with working it out. But we will definitely talk about that. And uh, if we do, we'll do a, a, a good job of kind of advertising it before, letting people yeah. know what we have going on, because uh, we want you guys to be able to have different resources at your disposal, not just us, but we also want to bring other people in who are experts and uh, can help us all, you know, learn something new. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the uh, credit repair, uh, the realtors, I mean, I think all of that stuff is very, very uh, important, especially yeah. during this time because people have an opportunity to, you know, really change their lives with credit repair. Absolutely. Buying a home or investing in homes. I mean, just on a side note, when we were in St. Louis, man, there were homes out there, all brick homes, decent size, right? Homes out there going for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars Wow. Now, paid up. And then, of course, the, you know, that home would need some work, but the houses were going for anywhere in those areas where they need to fix them up. You know, you spend $20,000, you selling it, you know, you put... $25,000, $30,000 work, and then you sell it for a hundred and hundred twenty thousand. That's the medium of what the houses is going for, you know, in, wow. in a lot of areas. So, I mean, this could be a huge opportunity for people to have, you know, and then you hear like a whole lot of these, you know, you don't have to have any good credit, no money down. I mean, you hear about all of that kind of thing, but in it, in this world that we live in, you got to have strong credit to do anything. That's just, that's just what, you know, that's just really what it is. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go to close, you know, I ain't going to go long. It's good to see y'all. <laughs> yeah. It was good to see you. I mean, I, I expect things, people are going to be busy with the holidays and anything, but I mean, if in worst case scenario, we're going to be here spreading this gospel. Um, we want to enlighten people. We want to have other people um, on. But please, we'll be here next week, uh, same time, same Facebook page, Martin and Murray Wealth Solutions. Um, you can give us a call at our phone number at 877-288-PLAN, or you can come to our website at www.martinandmurray.com. Um, and the good thing about going to martinandmurray.com, you can actually test out the engine for yourself. You can see how much insurance you need. You can use the calculator. You can do it all for yourself privacy of your home home that way nobody's in your business and you don't have to talk to nobody if that's what you choose to do so yep. um, we'll be here next week and we just love this time thank you for sharing with us all right that'll work that'll work so we open in prayer we're going to close in prayer who open in prayer Kyle I'd open so i'll close all right brother i'll let you you want to close then it don't matter. It's all good. It's all good. With me, Dave, brother. why don't you go ahead and bless us? Close us out, brother. All right, brother. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly <laughs> Father, yet again, we want to thank you for just blessing us and just giving us the capacity to just think about things that are connected to you. And we know part of that is the legacy and the legacy that you left behind through your son, Jesus, Father. We hope that in this message that we would be able to uh, ignite the hearts and the ears of people to realize the importance of being a service to not only themselves, but their family. So, Father, we pray that something was said here tonight that would resonate and as this circulates through the, the Internet and gets shared and people like it and, and they be, become interested. We pray that 
they would uh, develop the mindset to stay encouraged and to want to do more. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. We ask that you would go with everyone that is at the sound of my voice and guide them, deliver them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. God bless you guys. Always a pleasure. We'll see y'all next week. All right. All right. Now. All right.